Let's explore the intricacies of antimatter. In the previous episodes of this series on fermions, we have explored particles of matter, quarks and leptons. But these guys have cousins, antiquarks and antileptons. In this episode, we will explore the differences between a particle of matter and its antiparticle. We have discussed up to now the 17 particles which are part of the standard model. We have seen there's fermions, bosons, and in the fermions there are quarks and leptons. But we have neglected a whole bunch of particles. The mirror version of these particles. We've discussed matter, but there's also antimatter that exists. Well, take for instance the up quark. I can imagine here a mirror, and on the other side of the mirror, I would find the anti-up quark. I write up here with a little bar on it to say it's antimatter. Well, let's see how this transformation from matter to antimatter change the different parameters and characteristic of this particle. Well, when it comes to the spin, well, no change. Antiparticles are also fermions. When it comes to the mass, no change either. Here for the up it was 2.3 mev per c square. It will also be 2.3 mev per c square for the anti-up. But the other characteristics will change. The magnitudes will stay the same, but the sign will change. So for the up, for instance, we have a charge, an electric charge of two-thirds, where for the anti-up it will be minus two-thirds. The baryon number of the up is one-third, for the anti-up it will be minus one-third. Think about it. You know when I, when I build a proton with two ups and one downs, well I get a baryon number of one. If I build the same hadron but with antimatter particles, so two anti-ups and one anti-down, I will get a baryon number of minus one-third, minus one-third, minus one-third, minus one. It will be an anti-baryon, and in that case, an anti-proton. And the charge will also be reversed. It will be minus two-thirds, minus two-thirds, plus one-third, so minus one. Now, uh, for uh, the up quark, uh, the other numbers are all zero. So let's consider, for instance, they'll stay zero, also for the anti-up quark. Let's consider now the electron, say the electron has a mass of 0.511 mev. Well, the electron will be written like this, if you want, but it's more conventional to just say positron. The charge minus one for matter becomes plus one for antimatter. The baryon number is zero. The lepton number was one for the electron. It will be minus one for the positron. In future episodes, we will be discussing about reaction between particles. Some of these reactions involve both matter particles and antimatter particles. So it is important that you know how are these quantum numbers change from matter to antimatter or antimatter to matter. So remember, spin and mass don't change, but all the other numbers flip sign. In this video, we have discussed the properties of an antimatter particle. But hey, you might ask yourself, where is this antimatter? 
Where are the antimatter planets? Where are the antimatter stars? Well, this is a big mystery, and many cosmologists are actually actively working on it now. To find a glimpse of an answer, you have to go back in time, very far, at an instant after the Big Bang, where matter and antimatter formed. When a particle and an antiparticle meet, they annihilate. All their matter is transformed into energy under the form of very energetic photons. When matter and antimatter formed at the beginning of time, this is what happened. During this annihilation phase, all antimatter disappeared, but a tiny fraction of matter survived. And this matter is the matter we can observe today in our universe. There must have been a little asymmetry in some of the particle physics reactions that occurred at this time, and that allowed matter to survive. Today, a lot of experimental work and research is going on in order to discover and study these asymmetric particle physics reactions. Such study might shed a little light on this mystery. The next video will be about a mysterious particle, the neutrino, a really fascinating little beast, so check it out. Check also the three other videos on fermions that came before this one. They contain a lot of useful information for your IB physics or A-level physics studies. I will put a link in the description. In the meantime, good luck with your studies, and I hope to see you soon for a future episode of Physics Made Easy.